friends welcome back to the brilliancy point today we are going to study one of the most important poems of class 12th revery the darkling thrush by thomas hardy so this poem is a victorian poem that is it was written in the victorian period in the victorian era and victorian era as we all know is a very crucial period a very crucial phase in the history of humanity because it was a time when several revolutions take place it was a revolutionary phase it was a time when industrialization took place mechanization took place and at the same time there was a shift there was a shift away from religion and a shift towards scientific advancement one very important point to note is that victorian period and uh, uh, thomas hardy was a poet a, a, a very active poet in the victorian era and it was the time when charles darwin's the the origin of species it was also published and as we know that what the origin of species the theory of evolution says it says that the humans have evolved from apes from monkeys while earlier it was believed that we are the descendants of god so due to all such uh, all such happenings all such events this victorian era was actually a revolutionary period and it was also a period when there was somewhere it was the beginning of the loss of loss of faith in religion so thomas hardy is one of those poets and critics who were actually not happy with such developments as as they caused a disruption in the social lives of the people so this idea is also somewhere highlighted uh, is somewhere underlined in this poem and this poem was originally titled by the century's deathbed and why was it titled uh, like this uh, there is also very important point we'll discover it in the poem and uh, there is also a slight uh we can say a mixed emotions it awakes a mixed emotions among the readers because in the first three stanzas of the poem uh the poet presents a very bleak picture of the nature as he is lamenting on the death of the century so there is a kind of pessimism but in the last stanza there is a shift in the mood and the poem overall ends on quite a positive note an enthusiastic note and it also teaches us a very important life lesson also uh, let us now first look at the description of the author i'll just tell you a few important points about the author thomas hardy was born in 1840 and died in 1928 he was one of the most prolific english novelist and poets of later later half of 19th century and his popular works are mayor of kesselbridge and jude the obscure and thomas hardy was actually a poet who usually uh, mentioned or whose works usually reflected the social and moral concerns of of the age of the age where, uh, where he was writing when he was writing so this poem is also uh one of one of his works which reflected the social and moral concerns of the time period of the victorian time period so these are the important points you uh, need to know about the author now let us start the poem i leant upon a coppice gate when frost was a specter gray and winter's dregs made desolate the weakening eye of day the tangled vine stems scored the sky like strings of broken lyres and all mankind that haunted nigh had sought their household fires so the first line says i leant upon a coppice gate now the poet is leaning upon a coppice gate now leaning leaning is a is an action which is quite devoid of energy means when do we lean we lean when we are tiresome when we don't have energy so lent here is also quite a negative word which is depicting which is showing lack of energy in the poet so what is a coppice gate a coppice gate is basically an entry or a gate 
which provides an entry to a park or a forest. Uh, coppice gate can also be referred to to a gate which is made up of the branches or twigs or of wood, and it is usually an entrance to a park or a forest. See, this is a coppice gate, and now looking at this coppice gate, you can imagine that what might be the scene, scene of the poem. And the frost was spectre grey. So this term spectre grey is very important. Spectre grey means a kind of a scary looking figure or a a ghost. So why is the frost spectre grey? Since as I told you that this poem was written in December, and usually in December there is a very terrible, terrible coldness. all around all around us and in the nature and the entire nature the entire surrounding around the poet was covered with snow was covered with frost and it was so much of covered with frost that the entire place was looking very dull very lifeless and the whiteness as we know that the frost is white so the whiteness of the winter was looking like a ghost so the poet here in a way is personifying the snow covered uh, landscape he is personifying that landscape uh, as a ghost and ghost is actually a negative word this uh, specter gray or ghost it is a negative word so why is the poet using a negative imagery here probably because he wants to express the dullness and the harshness of the winter as we know that this poem was written in month of december when winter is at its peak so the poet is also somewhere wanting to highlight the harshness of the winter the extreme chillness around so therefore he is using a negative word here now the winter's drags made desolate the weakening eye of day this is again the same thing the winter's drags are a reference reference to the end month of the winter which is december and as we as i told you that uh, in december the winter is at its peak so uh, so in december there is extreme chillness extreme coldness and this whiteness and this coldness of winter is actually looking very dull and is actually making the surrounding also very dull and the weakening eye of the day the weakening eye of the day means that the sun is setting means this is uh, the time of evening and the sun is setting and due to the whiteness and the chillness of the winter this sun is also looking very dull the tangled vine stems scored the sky like strings of broken lyres now the tangled vine stems means the uh, the stems of the plants the stems of the plants and the vegetation around that once scored the sky means once uh, they were so fresh they were so healthy and they grew so fast that it seemed as if these stems are trying to touch the sky uh, but now in december due to winter these stems are looking like strings of broken lyres they are looking like the broken the broken strings of a musical instrument and also this phrase strings of broken lyres is a uh, is a simile as well as a metaphor it is a simile as the poet is comparing uh, the stems to the to this strings of broken lyres with the help of the word like but at the same time this is also a metaphor it is also an indication towards the fact that people have lost the music in their life now music in their life means uh, they have become so dull even the people have become dull inactive and they have also lost faith faith in fellow beings people have stopped trusting each other they have lost the faith in fellow creatures fellow human beings and also lost in uh, uh, they have also lost the faith in religion 
and all mankind that haunted nigh had sought their household fires and all the mankind which seemed to be so cheerful haunted means you know haunted is also associated with the word shouting and you know being active so all the people who were so cheerful who used to enjoy with each other play with each other in in the same place where the poet is standing now they all have sought their own household fires means they have went away they are now concerned only about their own house only about their own lives and they have lost the faith in in the fellow human beings and they don't need the support of each other and they don't care about each other so this is the impact on the social lives of the people means the social lives of the people has changed a lot and uh, now we can relate it with the victorian period that the developments the scientific developments that were taking place during the victorian era uh, such as the uh, a move towards uh, more uh, scientific knowledge the industrialization so all these developments were actually uh, disturbing and were actually hampering the social lives of the people and this is what the poet actually wants to convey now the second stanza says the lens sharp features seemed to be the century's corpse outlined his script the cloudy canopy the wind his death lament so the lens sharp features is a very simple phrase and it is a direct reference to the physical features of the land means the poet wants to convey that the entire area the entire surrounding around him the land the hills the mountains everything is covered with snow means everything is looking alike everything is looking completely white being so dull and so lifeless that it seems as if uh, it is a burial ground for the century's dead body for the century's corpse means it seems as if the century is dying and all these uh, natural factors all these physical features of land are preparing for the death of the century they are preparing a burial ground for the century so it is appearing so bleak so dull and his crypt the cloudy canopy the wind his death lament so again his crypt the cloudy canopy means the clouds which form a canopy clouds forming a canopy means the clouds which come together and it form a roof like structure so in usual sense uh, these cloudy canopies they look very beautiful and very pleasant but today since everything is white and the clouds are also white so all this whiteness is looking as if they all are preparing for the same thing for the death of the century and all these things the clouds and the land together seems to be a burial ground for for dead body of the century and the wind the wind also seems so dull that as if it is also singing a death lament for the century the ancient pulse of germ and birth was shrunken hard and dry and every spirit upon earth seemed fervorless as i now this ancient pulse of germ and birth germ and birth means the process of germination the process of being born the process of bringing forth so this process of germination and being born it is continuing for ages for centuries and centuries we cannot even date back uh, to the time when this process started as we know that daily some people are dying but at the same time a lot of people and not only humans even the animals the plants the germination and birth it is a continuing process it takes place but today on this particular day uh, the surrounding around him is so bleak so dull as if this process this process of germination and being born this process has also ceased to operate it seems so negative so pessimistic to the poet and as the poet also mentions that now no people uh, the people are only concerned about their own homes means no one is there around to talk with one another no one is there to play with one another so everything is very lifeless so this lifelessness is affecting the poet so much that he is thinking that the process of 
germinating and the uh, process of being born this process has only ceased to operate because there is no one around it there is no sign of life around the poet and every spirit upon earth seem forever less as i and till now as we know that the poet is not in a very energetic or enthusiastic mood so similarly all the people have also went away have also uh, gone to their own houses so it seems as if all the people on this earth are very energyless and very uh, and are devoid of any any sort of enthusiasm so this is what the poet feels at that particular time now let us move to the third stanza which is a shift in the mood and a shift in the tone of the poem from pessimistic to slightly optimistic so let us have a look at it at once a voice arose among the bleak twigs overhead in a full hearted even song of joy illimited an aged thrush frail gaunt and small in blast beruffled gloom had chosen thus to fling his soul upon the growing gloom so now while all these negative ideas were being uh, were building up in the mind of the poet all poet was thinking was uh, that uh, it is the end of the century so all the goodness of the century all the good things the cultural and moral values of the century are also coming to an end along with the century and poet was was sad poet was feeling very gloomy very sad about about this thing but suddenly the poet's attention poet's attention is now changed is now driven towards a voice which was coming from the uh, from among the trees from among the dull branches of the trees and that voice was actually an even song an evening prayer and someone was singing that evening prayer very full heartedly very joyously and full heartedly of joy illimited uh, the the voice was was containing unlimited joy means it was a, a very enthusiastic and a very happy kind of song and who was singing this song this song was being sung by an aged thrush frail gaunt and small so एक बहुत ही एजेड एक ओल्ड थ्रश फ्रेल फ्रेल यानी वीक वीक गॉन्ट यानी थिन बॉडी तो एक बहुत ही एजेड ओल्ड थ्रश जो कि बहुत ही नाजुक सी थी बहुत ही वीक थी बहुत ही पतली सी बॉडी थी उसकी और बहुत ही छोटी सी थी एक ऐसी चिड़िया एक ऐसी बर्ड एक ऐसी थ्रश आई एल शो यू द पिक्चर ऑफ अ थ्रश सी this is a thrush this is how a thrush looks and uh, are you able to notice the smallness and the weakness of this thrush means as compared to humans as compared to us this thrush is you know so weak and she is living in the same atmosphere as the poet but then she is so enthusiastic she is singing an evening song so happily while the poet is all poet is all uh, negative minded at at this particular time but this small thrush is singing a uh, an evening prayer in a very joyous way and in blast beruffled plume means its feathers are also all disordered or bahut hi bikhre hue se feathers hai uske but despite this condition agar hum dekhe to ye थ्रश के बारे में जितनी भी चीजें बताई गई है एक एजेड फ्रेल गॉन्ट और स्मॉल सी चिड़िया और जिसके पंख भी बहुत बिखरे हुए मतलब उसकी कंडीशन देखा जाए तो इतनी अच्छी नहीं है एंड प्रोबेबली द रीजन इज बिकॉज द चिलनेस बिकॉज ऑफ द कोल्डनेस क्योंकि वेदर इतना खराब है दिसंबर में दिसंबर में इतनी ज्यादा ठंड है जिस वजह से शायद ये चिड़िया के लिए जीना ही थोड़ा मुश्किल हो ठंड की वजह से बट देन ऑल्सो शी इज सिंगिंग अ ब्यूटिफुल सॉन्ग and this song is in contrast with the surrounding with the surrounding which is very gloomy so she is a kind of she is pouring her heart she is pouring her soul out on the upon the growing gloom 
आजू बाजू पूरी सराउंडिंग में हर जगह एक उदासी सी छाई हुई है और उस उदासी में ये जो चिड़िया है ये अपना सोल अपना हैप्पी सोल जो है वो प्रेजेंट कर रही है वो बिखेर रही है दिस इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस स्टैंडा नाउ द फाइनल स्टैंडा सो लिटिल कॉज फॉर कैरोलिंग ऑफ सच एक्सटैटिक साउंड वॉज रिटर्न ऑन टेरिस्ट्रियल थिंग्स अफार और नाय अराउंड दैट आई कुड थिंक दैट ट्रेम्बल्ड थ्रू हिज हैप्पी गुड नाइट एयर सम ब्लेसड होप वेर ऑफ ही न्यू एंड आई वॉज अन सो लिटिल कॉज फॉर कैरोलिंग्स कैरोलिंग्स इज अ क्रिश्चियन वर्ड एंड इट इज इट समवेर रिप्रेजेंट्स अ अ रिलीजियस फेथ कैरोलिंग्स बोले तो क्रिश्चियन फेथ में जो हम सॉन्ग्स गाते हैं चर्च में चर्च में एक तरीके की प्रेयर होती है एक सॉन्ग होता है विच इज टर्म एज कैरोलिंग्स सो दिस कैरोलिंग्स रेफर्स टू अ अ क्रिश्चियन सॉन्ग विच इज संग इन चर्च एंड एज वेल एज ऑल्सो इट इज highlighting the importance of religion since it is a religious word it is also highlighting the importance of religion and uh, it is uh, pointing towards the fact that we the humans we must always have a have a hold on our religion we must never lose faith in religion and so she was singing a caroling of such ecstatic sound ecstatic means extremely happy so she was singing that evening prayer in such a happy way means which was in complete contrast to the surroundings was written on terrestrial things means aaju baaju jitni bhi terrestrial things thi yani jitne bhi land tha trees the jitni bhi cheeze hai wo sab snow se covered hai aur un cheezon ko dekh kar to kisi bhi tarike ki khushi mehsoos nahi ho sakti of uh, so little cause for carolings of such ecstatic sound was written on terrestrial things afar or nay around so poet here is wanting to convey ki dur dur tak jitna poet dekh rahe the uh, jitna poet dekh rahe the dur dur tak cheezon ko to unhe sirf aur sirf negativity aa rahi thi in cheezon ko dekh kar ki bas sirf frost hai sirf snow hai aur snow se hi pura aaju baaju ka mahol pura covered hai aur uske alawa kuch hai hi nahi तो ये जो चिड़िया है मतलब देखा जाए तो सराउंडिंग में ऐसा कोई रीजन या ऐसी कोई पर्टिकुलर बात नहीं है जिस वजह से कोई इतना अच्छा गाना गाए बट डिस्पाइट दिस दिस बर्ड इज सिंगिंग सो ब्यूटिफुली सो हैप्पीली शी इज सिंगिंग एन इवनिंग प्रेयर सो व्हाट माइट बी द रीजन फॉर फॉर हर सिंगिंग एंड द पोएट वॉज एक्चुअली अनेबल टू गैस वॉज अनेबल टू फाइंड आउट दैट वाई इज दिस बर्ड singing this uh, such a beautiful song when there is no reason no sign of life uh, in the surrounding so uh, that i could think that trembled through his happy good night now his always remember this h is written in capital if h is written in capital then his refers to the god to the almighty so now poet is thinking that ऑल माइटी कि भगवान ने ही इसे शायद कोई एक ब्लेसड हो यानी एक डिवाइन शक्ति कुछ दी है जिस वजह से ये इतना अच्छा गाना गा रही है मतलब इसके पास कोई एक डिवाइन ब्लेसिंग या कोई बहुत ऐसा बोलते हैं ना डिवाइन या कोई रिलीजियस ऐसा रीजन है जिस वजह से ये गा रही है और मैं समझने में असमर्थ हूँ एंड आई एम अन अवेयर ऑफ दिस ब्लेसिंग आई एम अन अवेयर ऑफ दिस होप so this is the end of the poem and now you might be wondering that suddenly a bird comes into picture and changes the entire mood of the poem so what is the fact that uh, the poet is trying to strike at depicting it is depicting that the poet and the bird are looking at the same thing from different angles for example what poet is thinking poet is thinking that along with the end of the centuries all the good things all the good aspects of the century are also ending all the cultural and moral values are ending aur kyunki ye ek victorian poem hai jo victorian time mein likhi gayi thi aur us time pe to jo developments hai industrial development mechanization wagaira shuru hua tha 
सो द पोएट इज एंटिसिपेटिंग कि ये डेवलपमेंट्स आगे वाली सेंचुरी में और होंगे तो इस वजह से पीपल विल लूज फेथ इन रिलीजियन सो थिंकिंग दिस पोएट इज लेमेंटिंग पोएट इज फीलिंग नेगेटिव पोएट इज फीलिंग नेगेटिव ही इज फीलिंग एनर्जी लेस ही इज फीलिंग फर्वर लेस बट एट द सेम टाइम वॉट द थ्रश माइट बी थिंकिंग वो इस तरीके से देख रही होगी कि एक एक सेंचुरी का एंड हो रहा है तो उसी के साथ एक नई सेंचुरी का बर्थ भी तो हो रहा है एक सेंचुरी खत्म हो रही है तो दूसरी सेंचुरी का जन्म भी हो रहा है तो वो नई सेंचुरी के साथ कितनी नई अच्छी चीजें आएगी कितने नए डेवलपमेंट्स आएंगे सो शी इज लुकिंग एट दिस एंड ऑफ सेंचुरी इन अट एन अदर वे इन इन अ डिफरेंट एंगल विद अ डिफरेंट एंगल and that is the reason that she is feeling so happy and poet is feeling so dull so this is actually the hidden theme of the poem this is what the poet might actually be wanting to convey the difference in perspectives the difference in the angles in the way we look at something and it is our way of looking at something which makes us happy or sad so what can we learn from this poem we can learn from this poem that everything that happens in our life has two sides as we know that a coin has two faces so everything every event that takes place has two sides and we must try looking at something from the other side as well for example it might happen that sometimes we may regret about something we may cry about something so at that particular time when we are feeling low when we are feeling down hearted we must also try to look at 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 that particular thing from from the other side from the other angle and then we can always keep ourselves happy so i hope you understood this poem and this poem is really very interesting please read this poem as many times as you wish to and every time you will read this poem you will develop uh, some new idea and some new points to include in your answers and uh, if you have any doubt any query related to this uh, this poem and any other chapter specific chapter you can always comment me and please 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 do like comment and subscribe my channel and share it with your friends so that they can also learn in a better way